Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitch In Mommy, and it's Monday, May 6th, so happy Stitch Mania. This is my first official update for Stitch Mania. I haven't even posted anything on Instagram. My first comment would have been, Stitch Mania gets off to a fizzle, <laughs> instead of a bang, gets off with a fizzle. Because um, I had very little stitching time on Monday, um, or Tuesday, really, on that piece in particular. Um, my travel piece, my travel pieces, as always, have a decent amount of pro of um, progress, but home stitching is kind of dicey sometimes. I had um, my main piece last week, which was Midsummer Roses. Didn't get any work on Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday at the end of the month, so that one has only had travel stitching this week. And then in Domania, there were some days when I just had about a half hour available to stitch on my my things and so my temperature pieces didn't get worked out and I figured if I want to do anything at all on this piece today I got to do it and so I my temperature pieces suffered a little bit um, but I'm kind of digging back out of that hole again now so all in all it's um, the week finished better than it began as far as stitching things and I'm kind of on a on a good roll now with everything so let's get started First, I have a couple things to show you. My Color and Cotton Threads of the Month came in on Thursday. So here are those. And they, this orange one, wow, is really bright. <laughs> I'm sure I will find something, especially my son loves orange, so I might find something for him. The orange one is called Toucan. And Pretty good. If I get too close, it's kind of washed out. They're all a little bit darker than they show up there. This one is lily pad. That's really pretty. It's like light greens with some like um, mint green and seafoam green kind of all put together. Sapphire. Perfect. You know me. And <laughs> I guess this, I'm wearing more teal, but I'm a sapphire September baby, so I love sapphire. Royalty, which is a nice light purple, lavender orchid color and storm clouds which is really nice it's like a light lavender taupe i love her variation it's it's again a little bit all of these are a little bit more washed out than they are in real life but i love her threads color and cotton's threads are really pretty um the variation is is just right you know it for me anyways i know some people like um a lot of variation in their threads and some people don't like any and I think she has a nice, a nice happy medium there. So I really love her stuff. And then the other day, it was probably a couple weeks now, um, Lady Wing Designs, um, Zakia, I think your name is, um, she was showing, she had found a, a big pretty Thanksgiving piece on Tilton Crafts on their freebie section that had a cornucopia and some, you know, fall vegetables and things like that that it was actually really pretty and was kind of tempting. I'm like, hmm, I wonder what else they have over there. And at the very least, I can just stash that Thanksgiving one for who knows when, because it was really pretty. So I went over there and I got the Thanksgiving one and they had a September aster, which is the September fl flower. Um, and I, I saved those onto my computer and they also had this one, which is a little cupcake with strawberries. And this was also on the freebie section. And it's really cute. <laughs> I was like, oh, I really like that. Um, the background is white, which of course I wouldn't stitch. So um, this is a fairly small stitch count as it is for a full coverage piece. And then I wouldn't stitch the background. So it's actually even smaller than that. And I thought that was really cute. So potentially, you know, given the right circumstances, I could maybe start this in the next year. And I thought this light green Jubilee would go really nicely with this pattern because like these little green stems are a similar shade and they it kind of sets it off I had another one of the the other Jubilees I got from Kathy had uh, last week I showed you that box I got she, it had light pink and my first thought was I could put the pink uh, this this pattern on the pink but it was that would be too saccharine <laughs> too sweet but this green I think would set it off really nicely and this Jubilee is um, a really nice even weave, nice thick um, strands. It reminds me a lot of Monaco, 
So, which I love to do my full coverage pieces on. So, one over one on 28 count. So, I think that's happening. Probably next year or beyond. I have too many things I want to start next year, but I think that's going together because that's really cute. Um, I also bought some frames this week and did some FFOing. Some FFO stands for Fully Finished Object. And if you've been following me this year, I have finished quite a few things this year and at the very end of last year and haven't made time to fully finish them, which is not like me. Usually my projects are huge, so by the time I finish something, I'm framing them up immediately. Like a lot of times I'll go get the frame when it's not quite finished, and then so as soon as I put those last stitches in, like that night I'll be framing it. Um, that has not been the case this year, and so it's been really weird to have like five or six finishes sitting in my craft room not framed. Um, so I'm glad to get a few of them done and taken care of. On Tuesday, I went to the store, went to Michael's, and I debated where I should go, and I ended up at Michael's because <clears throat> they had quite a few framing sales. Um, their framing sales come and go. Like Hobby Lobby, their frames are usually always 50% off, but Michael's comes and goes, and they had a lot of framing sales. So I went ahead and went over there, and I found a piece, I found a frame for my S Fairy that was a certain, you know, it was pretty, it was a a little bit more than I usually spend on a frame even when it was on sale. And then I went to the next aisle, I found a different frame that was a little bit less and um, so I switched it out in my cart and then after I looked at all the frames and I thought I was done, kind of struck out on for most of my things I was looking for and I saw this little section off to a little set apart from the other aisles and remembered a sale I had seen on my, on the Michaels app that had a buy one get two free of this one brand and I was like whew I like that <laughs> that just uh, you know ticks all of my frugal boxes right there so I looked around found a frame that would work for my S Fairy for Hoot for my um, daughter's kindergarten teacher and for story time samplers so I will show you those in a second um, I actually waited I bought those on Tuesday <clears throat> and I didn't frame them until Thursday. On Wednesday, I had remembered while I was looking around for frames, um, I had seen a little square frame with a mat and thought, oh, that's cute. I, they actually do make something like that and kind of went on my merry way, um, focusing in on the big frames that I was looking for. And then later on Wednesday, I realized that's why that frame stood out to me is because I would like something like that for my Little House Needleworks monthly um, pieces that I'm making right now because I love this frame right here that I do my um, Joyful World cell pieces. This is a five by seven frame, a three and a half by five mat, and I have the fabric cut five, five by seven and I just put it in there like a picture. And it's super easy to change these out every month. So I wanted something like that for my Little House Needleworks and had not been able to find anything. And so when I saw that at Michael's, I knew I had to go back and get it. Um, that particular frame was not part of the sale that week, but I, there was a 60% off coupon that just happened to be on Wednesday only. <laughs> so of course I use that for this frame, which I am gonna, now going to use for my Little House Needleworks glare. <laughs> and it's going to go in my, you can see my staircase. <laughs> it's going to go in my uh, room. I put a picture up on Instagram next to one of my my Frosted Pumpkin National Parks pieces. So this is exciting, and I love that it's, I'm keeping the frame in this one um, because it's near, close, kinda close to my cat's litter box, <laughs> so I don't want it to get all dusty. So I'm glad there's um, glass on it, and it'll be super easy just to frame it out. I had the cut, I had cut my fabric pieces five and a half by five and a half, and this is a five by five inch frame. So all I had to do is shave off a quarter inch from each side and just pop it in. So now I just need to cut out the um, the edges of all the rest of them and I will be able to switch them out every month. I, I'll i show you, maybe while I'm at, while I'm here, I did start November because there are times when my Midsummer Roses is, isn't very convenient and this is really easy just to grab and go. For, um, so I did work on this a little bit throughout the day, um, throughout the week. And this one these are my last two. November my, and December are my last two. So once they're done, that whole year will be finished. So that's really exciting. 
here is where I am on November. I'm almost done with this first color, Timber. Super pretty color. It's browns and dark green. And I grew up in Oregon, so that's definitely the color of Timber. Fir, fir forests. So, um, <clears throat> that got a start. Really happy with that. And then on Thursday, I invited uh, Shelly, Key X Stitch, to come over and have an FFO party because she'd been wanting to finish some things too and and it's more fun to do stuff together. So she was available and came over. She brought some ornaments that she had a pre-stitched on her sewing machine to the backing fabric. So while she was here, she was turning them inside out or right side out, stuffing them and hand sewing the edges shut and she got five of those done, I think. So woohoo, go Shelly. <laughs> In her most recent video, she shares all the five that she worked on. And so while she was doing that, I did some framing. So here's the first one. This is Hoot. There I am. <laughs> By Bank Creek. And th this ended up being a white frame. I originally was thinking I would do a brown frame, like for trees or something. And they had a 9 by 9 square inch frame in this same brand that would have been part of the sale. That was like a shadow box. And so I was like... Maybe, I mean, it's, it's pretty much a square design. But the wooden, I don't know, the shadow box design would have made it a little harder to, to finish because this is the finish I'm used to doing um, quickly. <clears throat> With the shadow box, I'd have to like wrap it around something and mount it special. And, and the wood just, the wood color didn't necessarily work very well. So when I showed, put it up against this white frame, I actually was like, huh, that looks really nice because the fabric is pretty dark. It's like a dark, like a medium tanny green color. And so this brings out the white in the owls and it just kind of pops and makes the fabric do most of the talking. So I thought that turned out really well. So I will be gifting this to my daughter's teacher on Friday because today, this week is teach, no, just kidding. Next Friday is teacher appreciation week. So I'll be giving this to her next Friday. Thought that turned out pretty good. This is an 8x10 frame, and because of the way the the piece I had was a piece I got at the Southern California um, retreat in September, and so it was just, I think, a 9x12 or 9x13, 28 count or something. Um, there you can see a little bit closer. <clears throat> it was not necessarily cut specifically for this square piece. I just kind of centered it on the fabric and went to town. And so because of that, I had extra fabric on the top and the bottom, which made it perfect for framing in an eight by 10. So it worked out. I think that turned out really nice. Hopefully she likes that. And then the next one I worked on was my S Fairy. And I ended up putting this in a black frame and it's like, I've got a wood grain, so it's not solid stark black. And I thought that brought out the charcoal bits in here pretty nicely. The first frame I got for this was like a gray, which played off of the, the lavender colors in here pretty nicely. The next one was kind of a a soft pearly, pearly gold color, um, which made it kind of more warm. And both of those would have been nice, but when I got this deal together, um, this was the best frame in that brand that looked nice. They had a bright shiny gold that would have matched these, but that isn't really what I was looking for. And when I saw it on this, I'm like, yeah, you know, that could work. And with this one, I left the glass off because of these beads. <coughs> yeah, that stick up. There's treasures that are really... So these these beads might have, you know, been okay to squish, squish in there. It would have looked a little funny maybe. But these beads for sure would not have fit. So I just went ahead and left the glass off of that one. And this is the 32 count Rosewater Lugana by Color and Cotton with all my color choices from what I had in my stash. And I think that turned out really nicely. What I like to do for these um, is really basic. I like to choose a frame that comes with a mat. I take it apart, take the mat <clears throat> and um, cover it with the photo that comes with the frame, because they always come with a paper with a picture on it, you know, to sell the frame. Flip it over so the white side is facing the fabric, then have the mat, so it's fabric, back 
up, upside down photo and um, mat. And I wrap it around the mat and I do my lacing around the mat and then I put the backpack on. So that's what I do. And it's kind of a cheater method. It's not, it's a little bit bumpy right here because of the, the fab, the, the, in this particular case, the, um, the paper was slightly bigger than the mat, you know, so you can kind of feel it in there, but I don't really care. It gives it kind of a puffy look. <laughs> I am not going to care, and I don't think anyone who sees it in my house is going to notice, so I think it's fine. And especially if you have it um, with the glass, it's just going to smash it in there, and no one's the wiser. So that's what I did with all three of these. Here is Storytime Sampler. This is an 11 by 14 in the same brand and the same dark black um, wood grain look that the my fairy was in. So there's that one. <clears throat> and I thought that turned out really nice too. This is on 32 count Lana Blue MCG Textiles linen. And it's uneven. This particular cut is uneven. Some MCG Textiles is actually even, but a lot of it is not. And so this particular one is not even, which is why these are a little more elongated than you might have if you're actually stitching it on an even piece of fabric. But it still fit in this 11 by 14, so I am happy about that. And I had enough fabric on the sides that it still worked. It wasn't cut too closely. Um, and I like how that turned out. So everything is uh, super cute in there. I am, I am a pretty um, cheap framer. I don't and, and I'm fairly quick. I'm not too picky. So I think they turned out really nice. I still haven't quite figured out where they're all going to go. <laughs> but I think they turned out well. So that's all my finishing. Um, now I'll t show you the rest of my projects. I As I alluded to before, I was working on Midsummer Roses a little bit in the car. And got a little bit done on this. And some backstitching and some more white. So this is what that looked like last time. And here it is now. So I got this area backstitched, which I think turned out really cool. A little bit over here as well to finish out the thread. And then I was working more on this white just because I really want to backstitch. And I think I could do these dark red flowers as well. Um, because I think everything that touches the dark red has been done. But when I was working on this dark brown there were places I couldn't go because the white wasn't done yet. I'm just like, ah, I just want this white finished and then I can go to town on the back stitching. So I don't know yet. I might finish this half at least with white before doing more back stitching. Get all these holes filled in so then I can do the rest of this wood grain and start in on some flowers. So we'll see um, before I go over here and do this part of white. So this is going to be in the car uh, travel stitching. If I'm going somewhere, like I said, that's going to be like a, a doctor's appointment or a family get together or something that's just, you just want to grab something and go, I'll, I'll bring my other one. So I'll kind of have two travel pieces at this point. And we'll see, maybe there's a chance I could finish that in May. So we'll see about that. I may not get to work on either one of those today because I have, have to get some science fair stuff sorted out with my kids this afternoon and we don't have a lot of time <laughs> so probably be doing some of that instead of stitching this afternoon but um then my temperature pieces like I said got a little behind but then I'm kind of sort of getting caught up again so this is my quilt the mock-up and this is what that looked like before <clears throat> and here it is now I have the highs caught up for the the last of April and into May all the highs are there I still need to do the lows so yesterday these two had already been done before I got behind so yesterday I went ahead and did these two and these four um, and then next time I'll go back through and do all the um, all the low temperatures and I parked my sashing so that I can just at least do two blocks every time um, 
if I don't have time for anything else. So there's where that is. And this sashing goes all the way down to the bottom now. So that's coming along. Still a much cooler year than, than the year that I did the mock-up on, which I think is 17, 2017. Yeah. But I'm really enjoying it. This, this spring has been really nice, an extended spring. Can't complain. Let's see. And then my balloons, nope, not that one, is caught up. This one is a little bit easier to stay caught up on because there's only one color per day. So if I get behind, um, it doesn't take quite as long to get caught up again. And there's less um, extra stitching. There's clouds and baskets, but it's not quite as much as the sashing. So um, this is what that looked like before. And here it is now. Had a fuzz on my basket. <laughs> So um, I don't know how much more, I may not have done any more of that since you saw it last, but I did finish this row of the balloon, and so today I could do a couple more on this next row. I haven't stitched on anything yet today, so that's where that's coming, and I think it's coming along really nicely. I'm really excited, I'm really enjoying these. So um, I'm still mulling over ideas for another temperature pattern, because I think it would be fun to do at least, like a, a new one every year. Um, Still haven't 100% decided, and I have I have time to work on it. But I want to kind of get my idea, uh, you know, sorted out with enough time to properly design it and everything. <clears throat> so I think that leaves me with my Stitch Mania plan, uh, progress. So this first 19 days of Stitch Mania, I'm going to be working on a stitching shelf, and I had told you that I was going to do. A different scene every day and kind of count to that scene. Um, I had a comment for, oh I forget her name, Cheryl maybe? Um, had talked to me about friction pens because I had talked about not liking to grid and I went and found one that same day I got this frame. <laughs> I went back and I got both of those. Um, and it's, it's a little big but I think if I really wanted something um, this would be helpful. Because, in general, I'm not really a fan of gridding, um, I'm going to try to avoid that as much as possible. But if I do ever want to grid, I think I will I will enjoy using this. Because I tested it on the back of my fabric, it just irons right out, just like she said. So this is really cool. It's a Pilot Frix Frixen pen. And this was sold separately by itself for a little over $2 at Michael's. So not too bad. <clears throat> However, I had a different comment, just responded to her today, I forget her name. There was another comment on my video um, regarding how she did a full coverage piece where she did, she stitched along the edge of each row of pages and then counted off from there. And I think she did like solid row vertically and like a few rows she did some edge stitching along the pages that helped her um, keep track of her stitching. And that reminded me, I have done similar things where I start in the corner, boring backstitch. <coughs> I stitch, find a color that's not super thick and like hop, skip and jump my way to the main subject. I have done that before and I really liked that. It made me feel confident about where I was. And so that got me to thinking that I can stitch along the shelves, pick one common color along the shelf and do that color throughout the whole shelf and then from the shelf drop down into the different vignettes, different scenes. And so that really revolutionized what I was going to do and I didn't decide to do that until right before Stitch Mania and I really, really, really am happy with that decision and I'm having a lot of fun. So this is what it looked like last time. I don't even know if I'll be able to show you in the picture or in the video because it's so big, but this is where it is now. And I'm just gonna... Ta-da! So I didn't do anything over here. This is all just parked from before. And what I might do going forward after Stitch Mania when, when this comes around again is I'll work all these threads in. Because now 
that I have things cross country, I might just want to work on this cross country and just pick something and go with it wherever it is. So, um, but what I've done is I stitched along the top. I'm doing this two strand, two stranded half stitch on 28 count tea dyed Monaco, which I don't remember if I said this last time. I had questions about where I got this fabric. I got, and I think, yeah, maybe I did say it, but this is tea dyed Monaco 30 by 36 inch piece. I got it on one, two, three stitch. Um, in 2016, so they don't sell this size anymore. Um, <clears throat> but I stitched it a half stitch down the down the top shelf here, just lined up with this shelf and kept going. This seemed at the time like too big of a gap, so I switched colors. But then I realized there were more right here, and I just kept going with that color. I dropped down. What I decided to do is I would drop down into the scene with one main color and then do one accent color in that scene. This is the head of the lady in this first scene, right there. That's her head. And then I worked along some more and dropped down into this scene and came over here and did a little bit of the hourglass. And then I worked along some more, dropped down into this scene and did some of the lady's um, dress. I believe. So here's the hourglass and then here's her yellow dress right there. So I kind of dropped down into here did some yellow dress and then kept going and did some of this brown, came down, still had more string, came back up. So I kind of outlined this window and then her pink dress right here. And that was this one over here that around the edge of the window and her pink dress. So there's still another like page and a half this way that I didn't go. But at the end of my stitching time last night, I worked down from her pink dress. She was the farthest south that I had been so far and counted down to the new shelf. So this is the shelf between spring and summer. So what I'm going to do going forward now, I'm, if you'll notice, today is the sixth. I've had five days of stitching and I've only had four new scenes. So I am a little bit behind. Um, but I am really enjoying this method and I think it's really fun and it will have the same purpose, even if I don't get to all 19, it will have the same purpose of getting me to a special area so I can stitch on whatever I want whenever I feel like it, because there's so many different things in this piece. So going forward in this coming week, I might stitch this shelf farther this way, I haven't decided, um, as well as come along here and, and each, whenever I can, I'll pop down into a scene <clears throat> and work on that scene. However, I will be avoiding this area until the 15th because I, I want to work on the frog. So I am right here right now. So um, I may do this scene and come over here, you know, and wait on this scene and then, you know, drop down and do her this scene later. I'm not sure yet. Or I may just do whatever and just stitch on the frog that day and do a different do a different scene. I haven't decided. Whichever scene comes down farther, I'll count to this shelf. I'll probably need to pick a different color because so far this shelf and this shelf are about the same color. So I have one color, um, 3861. I'm just choosing that color because it's fairly common throughout the shelf and I'm just stitching that throughout the shelf. So now these two shelves are about the same color as well. So I'll have to do pick a different color for here. And I just noticed it's really light right here and darker over here. So I may have to change my color through here as well. Um, but I think that's gonna be really fun and it'll it'll accomplish what I wanted to accomplish to have a point, a reference point for all of these scenes. And it will keep things from being too scary counting wise. And I won't have to grid. So that's where that's at now. Am I getting it all in? Where is where is it? There, there it is. So there's there's where that's at for next week. So really happy with how that's coming along and looking forward to seeing what I can get done this next week. I had rough a uh, rough time stitching during the week. Not a lot of time then, but I did get some extra time on the weekend. So that made up for it. <clears throat> Saturday and Sunday, I was able to stitch quite a bit. So. Um, I think that's everything, and I am hoping that you guys are enjoying your Stitch Mania plans, whatever they are, or at least enjoying all the videos that are coming out. 
Hopefully I'll get to them before Stitch Mania is over. <laughs> oh, I'm about two weeks behind again. I got you know, caught up enough that it was no longer two weeks behind and now I'm back in it. So back two weeks behind again. Hopefully, um, I'll get caught up soon because I, I don't like being this far behind. One last thing is I promised to do the winners for my 5,000 subscriber giveaway and I, I drew those names right before this on my computer. So I'll insert that clip here. Hi, so I'm here to do the drawing for my 5,000 subscriber giveaway. I thought this time it was easier to record everyone's entries in Excel since there were so many of them and so different, uh, several different things people were entering for. So it was easier to do it this way rather than write it on a piece of paper and do it in front of the camera that way. So here we are on my computer. I have a column for the different charts and since column one is, or a uh, row one is the title. I will do my random pick from two until whatever is the bottom. And I'm going to do it um, in order of the least most popular to the most, just for dramatic sake. <laughs> so the first one is the state quilt, which was this one. This was one of my designs. And you could pick either a a four square that has all the same state or four different states or countries. Um, and so we had 29, two through 29. All right, so here we are on random.org and I'll put two through 29 and hit generate. And it's number 11. So number 11 is Kristen Ann. So congratulations, you are gonna win the state quilt. So I will put my information up later. You can either, any of any of the winners can find me on Instagram or Etsy and send me a private message or I'll put my email on the screen a little bit later and you can let me know, in this case, which state or states you would like for your quilt and I can get that um, emailed out to you. If you prefer a printed copy, I can also do that for my patterns. The next one was the Lavender Teacup, which is another one of my patterns. It looks like that. And that would be 2 through 40. So we'll switch this. And generate number 23 is Lisa Hudson. Congratulations. So again, you can let me know um, your email and I will get that out to you. The next one was the Peace Angel by Lavender and Lace, and that would be two through 55. Generate number 40 is Kaylin Bacon. So congratulations, you will get the Peace Angel. You can let me know your address. And then we have um, oh, I forgot to show. This is the Peace Angel. And the next one is Love is the Star by Homespun Elegance. And that one it would be number two through number 64. Generate 52. Let's see. W.T. That's all the username was WT. So congratulations, you can let me know your address and I can get that in the mail to you. And then the last one is Nantucket Rose, which is this one. And I have made mine a conversion to Anne of Green Gables. That would be number two through number 116. That was by far the most popular one. And we'll do generate 71. Cat Crazy Creations. Congratulations. I recognize that. <laughs> so um, congratulations to everybody. And I will put my contact information on the screen in a little bit. And I hope you all enjoy your charts. And thank you so much for just the fun journey this has been. A little over two years. And getting to know everybody. So Kristen Ann, you won the state quilt. 
Lisa Hudson won the Lavender Teacup. W.T. won Love is a Star. Kaylin Bacon won Peace Angel. And Cat Crazy Creations won the Nantucket Rose. So, I'm really excited. Thank you. So, yay! Congratulations, everybody. Um, this is, it was really fun to um, draw names and give away those charts. And I hope everybody enjoys what they are receiving. I will put up here some of the information. You can private message me on Instagram or Etsy or email me at stitchinmommy7 at gmail.com and let me know either your mailing address or your email for depending on what, what pattern you won. <clears throat> so hopefully that will all go smoothly and everyone will get their charts nicely. Um, I think that's everything. So I hope to um, probably come back Tuesday of next week. I think my husband might take Monday off. So I probably won't get to film on Monday. So see me, hopefully, Lord willing, next Tuesday. And in the meantime, happy stitching. Bye.